Hey guys, in this video I have two really awesome fun metal materials that I'll be teaching you how to make in Blender. These are both fully procedural and can give your abstract artworks or compositions a fun little boost. As usual with these tutorials, all project files will be available for free to download on my Gumroad. Anyway, let's get started. So instead of jumping into a brand new blend file, what I have gone ahead and done is set up a template file. And this template file has some very basic lighting setup and a really basic scene backdrop. So you can just get started right away with your materials without having to go through and set up all this extra stuff beforehand. Uh, this is how it looks, by the way. And the camera is kind of off. I don't know why. I'll be fixing that. Don't worry. I'll make sure to link to where you can get this file for free on my Gumroad. If you don't already, chuck a follow on that, you might get some cool stuff. So we have a subdivided cube here, and the reason why we're using a cube and subdividing it is essentially it gives better topology than a UV sphere would. Um, and what we do is we subdivide it and then we cast it to a sphere, and I'm going to subdivide it again with adaptive subdivision. And this is important for the second metal material that I'll be showing you how to make, where you really want to get some of those crevices and cracks. Anyway, so I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to just call it metal one. That's perfectly fine. And this first metal we're going to make is probably the easiest. That being said, the second one is pretty easy as well. So in our new material here, I'm going to create a bump node and we're going to plug that into our normal of our principal BSDF. Then we're going to add in a math node and we're just setting up for our color ramps that we'll be adding in. So this math node is going to be controlling the height of our bump. And instead of a add, we're going to be using a subtract. And we can add in our first color ramp here. And the input of this color ramp is going to be a Voronoi texture. Now this Voronoi texture, we're setting it to 3D, but instead of F1, we're going to be changing it to smooth F1. And now Euclidean, that's all fine. We can change the scale, but before we do that, I'm going to attach the distance to the factor of our color ramp and the color to the first value of our subtract node. And we can start to see what's going on here. Now, what's really important is getting the scale right. So I think a scale around 30, 30 is probably okay. Yeah, and that seems fine. And a smoothness of zero. And randomness of one is perfectly fine. Next, we're going to duplicate this color ramp bring it down and this forward oriented texture is going to control the second color ramp as well. And this is going to go into another math node so we can duplicate that, connect our color up to the first value and set this to multiply. And now we're going to finally add in another color ramp so we can duplicate that down and the color is going to go into the second value of our math node. And what this is doing is taking these two, these two color inputs and just multiplying them together to create a lighter input. The next two textures we want to create is a Musgrave texture and a Voronoi texture. Oh, sorry, a wave texture. Ooh, not a wavelength. Whoopsie. So we can connect the height up to the vector and the color into the factor of our color ramp. Now, obviously, we can't see what's happening. So I'm going to press Control Shift, left click on our color ramp to view it. Uh, you'll need Node Wrangler enabled to be able to do that. Otherwise, you can connect this into a viewer node like that. So let's have a play around with our Musgrave texture. I think we're going to increase the scale. So let's put this up to something like 14. And the detail too, that's all fine. This is all fine. We can keep that as is. But in our wave texture, I think I'm actually going to want to decrease the scale. So let's put that at 3. That's all right. And I'm going to increase the distortion like that. As you can see, that's changing the effect quite a bit. That's a bit too much. Let's just pop that at 10. Yeah, that gives quite a nice uh, ringed effect. And our detail, oh, slightly bump that up. Honestly, it's not going to make a huge difference anyway. The detail scale, that's okay. Mm, you might want to change that. Might want to move it up a little bit. And the roughness is going to just bring that right down. But as you can see, that doesn't make a huge difference. It sort of just makes these ridges pop a bit more. Next off, our phase offset, we can just leave that as it is. Now, most importantly, uh, what we haven't done is configured our color ramp. 
So to get more contrast into this texture, I'm going to grab the black value and drag it up. Just around the center is okay. As you can see, that's really pushed out any of those midtones and kind of left them as black. To finish our uh, finish our texture, essentially, is the output of this. We'll go into the subtract. And if we have a look at the end result here, we get this sort of bumpy, bumpy look, but we're not done yet. We have to configure uh, the rest of these color amps. And it helps to have everything set up like this before changing the color amps, just so you can see the final result happening before your eyes and you don't have to guess. So this color amp here, we want, we want to get these uh, black dots showing up. So I'm going to grab the black slider, drag it up, and grab the white slider and clamp it together. And this will give a lot more contrast in our polka dots, I guess. Oh, Rather annoy. This second color amp here, uh, we want to invert it. So I'm going to invert it. See how that looks. Finally, let's have a look at our result. And that's looking really nice. The reason we inverted this one though, was as you can see, like this, if it's not inverted, we get the, uh, I should say the Musgrave and wave texture is only going to be applied where the Voronoi isn't. So the reason we invert it is so we get the opposite, right? We want the Musgrave and wave texture to be where the Voronoi is. So it's masking out everything else. And that's, that's, that's it. It's super easy. So the next step, obviously this doesn't look like metal. So what we're going to have to do is change some of the principal BSDF, the principal BSDF settings here. So we're going to bring the metallic slider up and the roughness slider down. I'm not going to make it pure mirror because that doesn't look good. And that will give a nice, um, soft effect on the reflections. I'm Anyway, that is it for this first metal material. It's super easy. And as you can see, it's only a handful of notes. So let's move on to the second. I'm going to add in another material here and just name it metal two. So to get our texture applied here, we're going to go into edit mode, select everything and just press assign to our new material. So we can keep this principal BSDF node in here. We're not going to change that yet. We'll probably change it at the end. Uh, but for this one, you really want to make sure that we have our modify stack like this. If you download the template file, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Should all be set in our materials tab. We're going to change some settings here so we can get our displacement. So under here in settings and the surface settings, we're going to change the displacement from bump only to bump and displacement or displacement and bump. This won't make a difference now, but if we want to use this displacement input for our material output, uh, it will make a huge difference. I'm going to start by adding in a Voronoi texture here and we can have a look at that. So to change that, we're going to add in a color ramp and we're going to bring that all the way down. You might say this doesn't look quite right. Well, our scale is off and also we're not using the right, uh, the right mode here. So we're going to change it to distance to edge and that'll give us these sort of cracks coming through our material. So if we change the scale now to something like 30, they'll be uh, much smaller, but this still doesn't look like what we had at the start, which was sort of tiles. So to make them more tiled, we can actually change this randomness slider. And as you bring that down, like so, it'll stop it from being so random and it'll become a more uniform grid. But we don't want that at zero because zero looks too perfect. One looks too messy. So we're gonna put it at like 0.2. Anyway, continuing on, off this color ramp, we're going to pop this into a math node. And this math node is going to be set to multiply. And the second input of this math node will be another color ramp. So we can duplicate that and put that into the second input. I'm going to clamp this down a little bit more and you'll see why in a second. Because we're going to be using another, and this is a different, uh, different Vorino texture. So duplicate that to go to the factor input of this second color ramp. And now if we change this scale, we can increase the scale. But what we also want to do is increase the randomness. So think of this for an texture as the cracks in between the cracks. So to do that, we have to increase the scale, something like 40, and then the randomness. 
So if we actually take a look at the output of our math node here, it's combined the two, sorry, that's into what we want. We have the big cracks and the little cracks. I'm going to add in another color ramp. And this time, uh, this time it's going to be inverted. So let's invert that. And the input of this color ramp will be the same Voronoi texture as we had before, but it'll be going into a different multiply. And what we're, what we're now trying to do is give these edges here, um, sorry, the edges of the cracks. So these edges here are some noise. So we want them to be kind of chipped, if you know what I mean, because obviously flat edges isn't just, isn't going to look very good. So to do that, we add in a noise texture like that. And we can duplicate this color ramp here because the color, oh, the, sorry, the factor of this will go into the factor of that. Then we can, um, let's bring these sliders up like that. You know, that's all right. Because if we have a look at this noise texture, we, don't, we want it to be uh, not inverted, right? So the scale of this noise texture probably has to be something big, like 130, because we want those chips to be small. And the detail level, I mean, like, probably three. Three is okay. The roughness, though, we want to bring the roughness down, because we don't want this to look... Uh, we don't want this to look super chunky. Though, I'm probably going to clamp these a little bit more, so we can get that contrast. And... This uh, color output here will just be going into our second math node. Now, what do we do with these two math nodes? Well, we're gonna combine them in another math node. So set this math node to add, and it'll add these two values together. So if we have a look at what that looks like. So if we have a look at this first one, we have no chips. Second one, we have only the chips. And then the third one, we have both combined. Let's go about adding, uh, you know, cr changing this from, oh, sorry, taking this black and white mask and turning it into something like bump and displacement. So the way we're going to do this is super easy. We're just going to add in a bump node and the height of this bump mode, uh, bump node is going to be the output of this add math node and the normal can just go to the normal like that. And if we have a look at the principal VSDF, we've added bump. But the problem with bump is that if we have a look right at the edge here, it's not actually deforming any of our mesh. It's purely just doing shader black magic. So the way we get pure proper displacement is through a displacement node. So we're gonna add in a displacement node. And instead of this value in our displacement, right, which is everything, well, we don't really need that because we don't wanna we don't need to be able to see the small chips in displacement, that can just be done by bump. So why don't we just take the big parts of our material, which are these, uh, the tiles, and displace those. So we're gonna just use, uh, just use the tile mask for that, which is this one. And if we connect that up, we can see, wow, that's not right. Oh, the reason is we have to change the scale of our displacement to something like 0.01. That'll give you just enough that'll look right. And the reason this bump here is not working is because the strength is a little bit too high. So let's turn that down. And as you can see, we've got a really nice looking metal here, except it's not metal. So once again, all we have to do is change our roughness value. So bring that down and change our metallic value to one and this is looking really cool. Another little thing we can do to make this just look that much nicer is take this value here and plug it into our anastropic and that'll just upgrade it a little bit. Now if you want it silver that's perfectly fine but we can change the base color to uh, something gold like that and if we do post-processing on this we can take that little bit of gold and push it right up if we want to. Now that's our second medal complete. And with that, the tutorial is finished. Except there is one more material I'd love to show, which is more of a bonus medal, because it's so easy and it can really give your previous materials just a little bit of pop. So I'm gonna add in another material, assign it, 
And this one is really just like three nodes. So we're going to add in a Fresnel node. And this Fresnel node is going to be controlling our color ramp. And then we could clip it just a little bit. And this will be controlling our mix RGB node. Now this node, this will go into the factor. And the output of this will go into our base color of our metal. And we can pick two colors here. The two colors I'm going to pick deep dark sort of purple and a really bright green. But once again, we want it to be metallic. And I'm going to bring the roughness down just a little bit, a bit more. Um, I'm probably going to make this a little bit more saturated. And I'll make this one a little bit lighter. And that's, that's it. It's super simple, but it looks really nice. And if we were to put this on something like a Cezanne head, it just looks so nice. Look at that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, maybe consider subscribing. As always, all the project files are available here or in the description. Make sure to grab that template file and I'll see you next time.